something that I hope you'll be able to put on your next agenda formally and approve it. Um, this is from the uh, Historic Preservation Commission, and you recall that over the past year, we've been in the process of developing a um, historic register district nomination for East Calais. That work is uh, done, essentially. It's, okay. it's, it's, it's at the state level now, and one hopes it'll go forward. Um, we've now followed that with, uh, we're doing a similar project with one additional wrinkle um, for um, the village or the hamlet of Adamant um, seeking historic registered district status for the Adamant uh, community. Um, we got a, a, a CLG grant for that and um, we're using that fund as we did um, last year for East Calais, we're using that to hire a consultant uh, to do to develop the uh, report that's the basis that is the nomination. Um, a fellow named Brian Knight did the uh, mm -hmm. East, did Calus. The East Calus work and everyone was very pleased with that. Uh, we had two um, proposals this time, his being one of them, and we decided that uh, assuming he would uh, be content with the kind of contract that we gave him that we would um, select him again, and he was. Um, so what I have here is the contract um, that he has signed um, and I wanted to leave that with you and get guidance from you as to as to how we can get this considered and, and approved I hope that it will be we can do it we can do it briefly it sounds like it it, it didn't make it to the agenda so we don't have the ab right. ability tonight to sign it but we could do it um, on the 22nd okay. really quick what is the timeline um, we're fine. Um, the first um, formal uh, event that will take place under this uh, contract is uh, a kickoff, community kickoff event, which we've scheduled now for the 16th of August. Oh, okay, uh, which so is time. Right. Okay. Hopefully it'll work out. It'll be uh, after the Friday night cookout that night. <laughs> we'll see. There you go. Uh, one little wrinkle to this that would be interesting, and I would be grateful for any uh, thoughts. Uh, or advice you might have uh, going forward, and that is there's going to be a, an oral history component to this one, which we've not had before. Hmm. So we'll probably have only about four people, but we're, we're, we're trying to develop a list of the best people to do oral histories for Adamant and hmm. stuff that's happened there. So we've, we've got yeah, some ideas, but we're open to any suggestions. Yeah, Gail and Judy and those folks might have some suggestions. Lester Toby. Yeah, I was gonna say, yeah, yeah we don't have Lester Lois Toby. Yeah, that right. right, right. We, yeah. we we haven't talked to him yet, but he he is one. Frank Supermel for the music school. Right. Yep. One. Absolutely. Um, and there are a couple of other folks that we might. Yeah, I know the Porters have lived there for a long time. They have. Yeah, they have. So. And there's some folks. There's a woman. I can't remember her name, but several people suggest her, and I've never heard of her. So, but I'm sure you would, would know. You'll that. probably end up with more than four people. I know, but we should only pay for four. So. Okay. All right. So we'll, I'll put this on our 722 agenda for signing. Okay. And either I or perhaps Scott will come. Okay. Thank All right. You. Thanks, Larry. Thank sure you. Sure you don't want to stay and enjoy the home. I, I, may, I may stay and okay. yeah, I I talk to you guys. Put your Peter there. Yep. Um, okay. Peter. Okay. So I'll make it quick. Really quick. Before, uh, just before you mowed, Lucy and I went out and drove the roadsides, all of the roadsides in town, for over two days. I'm still writing up what we wrote out and what we mapped. It turned out I need to be more efficient about it, to find a different way. Um, then you mowed. This is what you mowed three, three weeks ago, four weeks ago. Is um, that the same plant? That's the same plant. Okay. This is from your roadside roads. This is from uh, Lightning Ridge is the worst I hit know. in all of, uh, all of Calais. Um, the two of you each have manageable roadsides and you can get rid of it. I don't we're learning how to do that. Plan. And Denise, you've got one plant just below your driveway this year. Really? 
that means that you're going to have at least six where that one plant was next year. Okay. Uh, so this is uh, wild chervil that I just pulled today from your roadside grows. This is what you, you uh, got mowed off. Mm -hmm. You can see it doesn't get killed. What it does is this stopped it from going to seed, but it didn't stop each plant from producing another somewhere between three and six or more plants around it, which look like this already this year. Mm -hmm. And these are plants that I pulled, um, and these are just uh, now about five weeks old. So these are actually a little older than uh, what you have, but they will go to flower at this height, mm -hmm. which is like two weeks old. And then they'll go to seed. These are now going to seed up here. Mm -hmm. These will be going to seed uh, over the next week or two, which means that when you mow the roadsides, um, you're going to be spreading these seeds further and further, including up your road. And so that's really all I wanted to say was, is when you mow it, all you do is delay. It, it doesn't die. This is a, a, a plant that's not a biennial. It only uh, stops producing, it only dies when it is allowed to go to seed. So this plant will try again next year. And the other six plants that it's produced will try again next year. And then when you mow it, then you'll have six times as many seeds mm -hmm. next year, and then you'll have six times as many seeds the year after that. So you're never going to get it by mowing it, and you're only going to get it by uh, actually more than pulling it, but actually digging these up, which is not feasible mm -hmm. on, um, on about four or five roads right now. Yeah. Or anywhere, really. Uh, yeah, it is. Who's got time to do that? It's I know you have time to vacuum in the house. You're, gonna have, you're not going to have any time to do anything when your fields are full of it. I'm just telling you. I know. I've been after it for four years now. Well, Peter, are, can you confirm that the, the tall stuff you have, you got? You said you had for that from Lightning Ridge? From Lightning yeah. Ridge? Mm -hmm. from, ro from within the town's right of way on Lightning it's Ridge? It's within the town's right of way, but you're only mowing somewhere between that, zero that answers my question. and four feet in the town right of way. And okay. this has already gone beyond. Mm -hmm. and, and wild chervil will go into the woods and it's already headed into the woods. You've got a couple of thousand feet of frontage, I think. So um, to, it's, it's to, just heading into the woods. Mm -hmm. So to wrap this up, I guess your your point is you want to see what this I wanted looks you like. to go out, I, rather than you know try to get you out there to look at it. I wanted to bring the chervil mm -hmm. to you. Well, I will go and look at it at the, mm -hmm. by so, my driveway. So, so you this is no information. Yeah. This is different information than we understood. I think you too. Mm -hmm. Last year, we were informed over many conversations that this was a biennial. That if we pulled it one year and got them, then that they would only try one more year, and then that would be it. But now we're hearing that they're perennials, basically. Since I first came to you six weeks ago, I've done nothing but talk to people go out and, and survey, talk to farmers, talk to uh, people, the, the woman, who I, I can't remember her name right now, who's running the, the program about invasive species in the roadside, who Alfred is working with. Is that Joanne? Yes. Joanne Garth. Joanne Garth. Okay. Yep. Yep. Um, has, I think, said in her report that uh, she's recommending four or five times a year of mowing. Mm -hmm. I don't know of anybody who's going to do that. I did go to the Marshfield meeting that mm -hmm. she went to, to present it and she didn't get very far there either because the road crew it does the mowing in Marshfield and mm -hmm. you know and, and then you've just doubled your budget from five thousand right. to ten thousand to mow it twice. Right. Um, mowing isn't going to take care of this. I think the only thing that's going to take care of this is is keeping it from the roads that it's not in yet. Of which there are only half a dozen roads in town that are probably not manageable. Okay. And keep it out of those. Well, all of Route 14 is full of it. And it's so we have people mm -hmm. moving hay all over town. Mm -hmm. Another agenda. I think I think this is what you're doing is really really important work, but you're not on the agenda tonight. We have public comment, which you've had. I've had enough time. Had plenty and of time. Just, if you would like to have this, this will us look discuss yet, this further month. and answer questions, ask mm -hmm. questions, and have that dialogue, I can put you on probably in August. Okay. Mm -hmm. In August, uh, I'll have a lot more information, but okay. this this will not be green by in another month. None of these plants will be, these will be green, but these won't be. These will be brown okay. and they will go on to see. It's for us to ask questions because uh, mm -hmm. I, I, yeah. we don't okay. have time. Yeah, I mean, I'm sure there's more questions than everybody has. 
Well, I'll be a lot further along. I'm going to slow down to one day a month, mm -hmm. or one day a week now, because I've been doing this for six days a week for the last six weeks. Yeah, I know you have. You put a lot of time and, and into it. So I, I can't do that anymore. Uh, but I'm convinced that there are there are two different way there are two different problems. Okay, so let's have one is your problem, and one is the homeowners. I've been going to homeowners on Lightning Ridge who have no idea what this stuff is. Right. So I think that maybe some kind of a meeting to educate the public is really in order and maybe we could get something together with Joanne Gart and I can contact her and see well, if she's I'll available. I'll be talking with her again. I've talked with her several times. Okay. So and let, and I don't think that's going to work. I think, uh, but we have to find something that does. Okay. So we'll like I said, it's... We'll see you in August. We'll see, yeah, we'll yep. see you in August. Okay. And I'll Thank you. And I'll contact so Joanne you, as well. And you will contact me about which meeting in August? Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. And I'll have a lot more information okay. right now. Um, it's just uh, we're, we're circulating things around. Yeah. To uh, but I'll be working with uh, UVM and, Great. and a few other places. Well, it's really important work, and we appreciate your efforts. Okay. Very yeah. informative. Thank, yeah. you. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Mm -hmm. okay. You're a terrible expert. No, but I'm finding out that it is doable. Mm -hmm. And John, you can do something about it. Okay, so we really have to cut this off. Thank you. Thank you okay. very much. All right. You're welcome you. to stay for the rest of the meeting. No, I'm going to go home. <laughs> Take your turbo with you. Yes. yes. Yeah. And don't drop any seeds. You also have it right outside yeah. here. Right out right Jen, on, uh, grab on the this tissue road. and wipe the corner of the table, please. There's a book on it, too. So you got it in your town hall. Okay. Thank you, Peter. Okay. All right. Yeah, home, any, other public, any other public Any other public comments? Thank you. Items? Anybody, is anybody else back there, Larry? Um, not that I see. Okay. No. All right, changes or additions to the agenda? So I'd like to propose a change. Good. Uh, 8 o'clock, we've scheduled to have a discussion regarding the ITRFP. Mm -hmm. If there are no objections, I'd like to move that to the end of the meeting because there's a possibility we may need to go into executive session due to some of the uh, contractual elements okay. that are discussed in the RFP. All right, anybody have any objection to that? Mm -hmm. All right, moving right along. Um, Elizabeth Casey, are you Elizabeth Casey? Yes. Yeah. Nice and to meet you. Nice to meet you. Welcome to Dallas. Thank you. <laughs> so thank you for working with us on the LEMP, not LEOP anymore, and um, agreeing to be our public information officer should we have an event and need that help. So um, we've never had this position before. So um, I would make a motion that we appoint Elizabeth O'Casey as a public information officer for our LEMP. Second. Can you give us a little information about why why you want to why yeah. you want to do this? We're not Definitely. we're very happy. Yes, yes. yes. <laughs> <laughs> right now, I work for the agencies of natural resources as their communications director, oh. and so I have done some crisis communication when there's different pieces that apply to the public about water contamination or oh. algae blooms, etc. And so I've I've been working on that for se several years, and um, Nick has approached me about being the PIO for Calus, and I think it's a good opportunity to help communicate when needs arise, and we would work with the Vermont Emergency mm -hmm. Management folks to make sure that we're doing it in the most efficient way. Perfect. So, yeah, I've lived here for about a year. Before that, I lived in Brookfield and Windsor and Woodstock and then Oregon. And Great. So and now you're a little right bit. downtown Maple Forest. Exactly. Downtown stop, stop by. We have paddle boards, pad pedal boats. Ah. Are, are you in Steve and Ann's old place? Yes, yeah, Steve okay. Pusick and Lodgers. Yeah. Okay. And you painted it different colors. They already painted it. Oh, they did? Oh, okay. Red when I moved in. Otherwise, I would have left it purple and everyone would have hated me. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, thank you so much. Any yeah, thank you for the opportunity. And you know, this job pays really well. Of course. That's what, that's what, that's what got me here. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We, would you. you like to take a vote on this? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none. You're on. Thank you. Excellent. Thank you. And you've got a copy or it's online of the report? Yes. Good. I'll look online and then I'll talk a little bit more. We'll talk a bit more. Yep. All right. Perfect. Great. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Um, we now are going to hear from our delinquent tax collector and treasurer. Mm -hmm. I think we should bring the contract to another people. Oh, that's good. 
Mm -hmm. for other stuff. He's, it's, we need he's retired now. I know. He's, that's why he took over. So I didn't know you were a delinquent. I am. <laughs> you're a delinquent and you're a tax collector? I am the tax collector and the delinquent tax collector. The treasurer is often times your tax collector, but sometimes it's the constable. What are you right now? This, at this time, I am the delinquent tax collector, and I am updating the report that we reviewed on June 20th. And um, and what, that just as a very quick recap, on June 20th, when we last met to discuss this issue, we were, the delinquencies were in excess of $65,000. And as of today, they are in excess of $47,000. So a significant amount of delinquent taxes has come in since that time, which it very much improved the outlook of our bottom line. Again, uh, with this report, as with the previous report, I have um, referred to parcels and taxpayers by number, mm -hmm. and the tax, the uh, orange indicates my my recommendations for parcels to be turned over to um, Glory of Rice based on no contact mm -hmm. and no payment. And that's the, right, okay, that's the orange one, yep. So I would like to just update you very quickly. Uh, number two made a significant payment and reached out before the close of the fiscal year. Regrettably, today in the mail, that check was returned NSF, and there has been no contact discussing that. So that is of some concern. Mm -hmm. um, there are two parcels, number seven and number 18, where the amounts are small enough that it might be doubly, doubly punitive to turn them over to the attorney because of the costs involved that will be passed along to them mm -hmm. um, once they're in that system. And I would leave that to the select board's yeah. dis discretion as to whether or not we want to do that. The first, uh, number seven, is actually not likely to pay at all. Um, $3,000 of that was paid on his behalf by the, a relative who was the prior owner of this parcel. Mm -hmm. But again, that is, um, that is, that's really your call. The other ones, the other, uh, the other numbered parcels in orange, um, it's just very simply, there's been no contact and no payment. Oh, there was one phone call. Number 19 did make a phone call to say he was he was looking into it and, and never followed up and did not mm -hmm. send a check. So you can um, mull this over. Mm -hmm. You can decide maybe by the end of, by your next meeting, if we are gonna take this course of action mm -hmm. or how, how you would like to deal with it. So you'd that. like to know by the end of July whether we're going to turn properties over to yeah. the tax attorney. Yeah, I think by your next meeting that will give you all a chance to think about it. I, I think in particular we don't have a policy in place and maybe this is an opportunity for a policy to be created. To we have a delinquent tax policy. Yeah, we have a tax no, no, tax that's policy. not what I was going to say. But to talk about the the really small amounts of delinquencies that are are really likely not to be paid. The one uh, number eighteen, that parcel was purchased at tax sale, <laughs> and the new purchaser, who is a Callis resident, 
has not paid or responded to any request for payment of these taxes. Right. I would want to make sure that we treat everybody the same. So we want to, you, you want to really think about it, I think. Those small amounts bother me. They do. Um, but I can honestly tell you the one, the number seven, is really not likely to pay. And, uh, but my concern is, is why would because number, number seven and number 18 18 I don't I guess I don't know why we would give them a pass well that is your call I know and I know. I'm just thinking aloud here and that's where we we have a, a very detailed delinquent mm -hmm. tax policy because you've in terms of notifying people but in terms of where you actually pull the trigger, forgive that expression, because we, have, like, we number, don't have a policy on Like that. number 15 and 16, their amounts are similar to number but 18. They're, they're on a payment plan. They're on a payment plan and have been but, paid But, but that's what I mean. So, but, but their amount is small. Similar to similar 7 and 18. To 17, and, but, and, and you're suggesting that maybe we would forgive number 18 but yet, number 15 and 16 are on a payment plan for about the same amount. That doesn't seem... Well, I would just simply point out to you that the delinquent tax policy allows and uh, is, res um, is respectful of payment plans as long as mm -hmm. the taxpayers are abiding by them once right. the payment plan no, is in that. place. So that's what distinguishes them. These folks were not on a payment plan and there's no contact. And I know, no that's payment. my point. That's my point. Yep. Is those folks are on a payment plan there. Oh, and they're suffering the consequences of their payment. I get that. And that. But, and these people haven't. And so my, and my, my question my, to myself is, why, would it, why is it okay for them to be on a payment plan for a small amount? They're doing what they can to pay off. But yet, other folks that have a similar amount that haven't made any contact, haven't made any effort, why would we forgive that. Well, we're not going to, you're not suggesting we forgive it. That, no, that carries that we forward don't, onto their that next we, bill. That it carries forward. Well, saying not pursue it. Not pursue it. Not, not, not pursue it by turning it over into a tax. But it right. could get taped onto the next bill. But it, if they don't pay their next bill, then their uh, delinquency mm -hmm. is is increased by right. this prior delinquency, right. and that would okay. so that's what I just want to make sure. So we're no, talking it doesn't about get the level of effort for it's that an in, relative it's to an the in amount. Between. Correct. Thank you. Yeah, so yeah you're suggesting an in between. Uh, we don't turn it over to Gloria and incur the expense over that small amount, but we don't forgive it. We, we don't just forgive it. Tack it onto the next right. bill. Which and we'll see if they pay that. Then. Right. Exactly. Well, it's never tacked onto the next bill. It remains well, its own. It remains right. its own separate bill. But what happens is, over time, those bills accumulate to an amount larger than right. we mm -hmm. want. Yeah, to yeah. Carry. No, I understand yeah. that. Yeah. 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 Okay. Thank so you. I would just simply ask the board to consider that, and um, mm -hmm. I do want to uh, draw your attention to our. Um, to how we ended the fiscal year. I will have these for you by next meeting up on the board, but not not tonight, I'm sorry. Today okay. became a very uh, Challenge. very challenging day. <laughs> so we ended the fiscal year negative $9,173.34. So our my earlier projection that we would be uh, down by twenty to thirty thousand dollars. It is happily not so, and actually, that twenty thousand dollars that came in at the last minute on delinquent taxes put us into this uh, much better situation. What What was the number that we were? Oh, the you don't have that. Right. Nine thousand one hundred seventy-three dollars and thirty-four cents. Uh, between now and your next meeting, I uh, the auditors will be in to audit FY19. There is statutory uh, guidance on what a town must do with a deficit. The question is, is there, and um, at, will a select board be able to not collect that deficit and let the fund balance absorb it? or do they have that choice or must they comply with the statutory requirement um, to 
collect it. And in our case, the way I read the statute, our attorney is on uh, vacation right now, but the, that statute looks like we would basically add that $9,100 to our budget more or less mm -hmm. and then uh, raise it in taxes for the next year. Basically the statute says we, we cannot yeah. carry a deficit forward. So um, by the next select board meeting I will have either or both input from the town's uh, independent auditors or, or and Jim Barlow, the attorney, mm -hmm. as to um, whether you must collect it or whether you do have a choice uh, to not collect it, given the fact that you have a fund balance. So, uh, can I point of clarification, sure. just so I understand, were these taxes paid timely, the ones that are, people are in arrears on, we would not be yeah, in the deficit. Absolutely. Right. Okay. So just to be clear, our select board did not act imprudently. Um, we acted within our their budgetary constraints, but we came up short 44,000, and in fact- 47. 47. And if in fact we all taxes were paid timely, we'd have a, a surplus of some, right, uh, <clears throat> almost forty thirty eight thousand right. dollars. Correct. The, the forty seven thousand okay. is in, right. So we yeah, have to that's a deficit is less than ten. So maybe the that is a very good mm -hmm. clarification in the I minutes you reflect like that. So let me let me just so give the just film a, reflect that. Right. So let me just give mm -hmm. uh, the minutes and the film in rounded numbers, how the select board was not imprudent. The budgeted expenditures were $872,000 plus. The actual expenditures were $862,000 plus. So we, so we were underspent under, we were under budget by $10,000. Very good. Thank you. Thank you for the Thank clarification. You for, Thank you. I was getting to that. <laughs> I just want to make sure it's that the it general is. public is understanding of And it is very program. important. It and is. the last update, I think your agenda is pretty And the carry tonight. forward from last fiscal year could be the carry by taxes received next week should uh, a significant tax. Well, what happened? In significant arrears. Right, and what happens forward. now is everything is in FY20, so right. all revenues that are coming in uh, really do not affect FY19 anymore. Right. We're closed. Right. So that you have also an idea of how the fund balance has been affected. We opened the year rounded with $318,000 in the fund balance. Mm -hmm. We closed the year with $309,000 um, in rounded numbers. So that's where that 10,000, that $9,100 fits in. Mm -hmm. okay. uh, and last piece of information on this, the highway fund did end the year in the black nicely. Mm -hmm. And we transferred from their budget to their capital equipment fund per article voted on by the town, the amount of $21,577.04. So that, um, that goes right into their uh, that goes into the capital company. equipment fund, mm -hmm. which now is at $102,000. Four hundred one dollars and ninety six cents. And is any of that money um, spoken for? Yes, uh, roughly forty thousand dollars will come out of that capital equipment fund to meet uh, the two thousand nineteen West Star uh, lease obligation uh, in January. Okay. So that'll bring us to about sixty or so. Yes, it's still under the capital equipment fund. Yes. Okay. Um. That is my uh, my update, and I'm happy Nicely to have done. any questions. Thank you. And now, what do I ask? Um, I'm going to just launch into something to tad off the agenda. Yes. Before we go to a different topic, I would like to request or suggest that Sandra and Katie work together because you were you were tossing numbers, numbers around with concepts faster than I can absorb. Um, so that 
you've seen what Katie captured sure. and had a chance to tighten it up or you know yeah. whatever before before that five day where it's a mm -hmm. in the minutes in the minutes sure. something right. confusing mm -hmm. or pub or wrong becomes public. Yeah. Yeah, Katie's usually pretty good that. about asking questions before she posts anything mm -hmm. if she's not sure. Would you rather I send it to Sandra before I post it to before I post the draft minutes that I yeah, get okay. a confirmation sure. from yeah. her? Okay. Yes, please. Posting, All the time posting, posting means oh. public. Yeah. Um, post, yeah. 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 Well, especially for well for this. Okay. And whenever yeah. we ask. Right. <laughs> sure. <laughs> yes. Yes, I understand. Thank you. Yes, Katie. Yeah. Okay, so you have uh, one more issue that arose today. That so an issue that arose today that I'm basically asking for forgiveness, not permission, has to do with our employment of our beloved swim assistants in the swim program. Uh, the swim program folks and I have over the course of the last couple of months. Um, sussed out a number of wage and labor issues and uh, an issue that we hadn't sussed out because it really was on no one's radar was uh, if there was an age uh, requirement for a swim assistant. Uh, you folks sent me to a human relations workshop in June where I was educated by a representative from the U.S. Department of Labor about child labor laws specific to our program. He sat with me, I spoke with him personally, and as it turns out, our there is a regulation concerning lifeguards. He felt our swim assistants would fall under that, and they must be 15 years or older. So the way the regulation is written, if a job is not listed, 14 and 15 year olds are prohibited from it, there is no job called swim assistant, only lifeguard, but he felt that a likely interpretation by the department, if it should come before the department, would be to treat them as a lifeguard, but they would have to be at least 15 years old. And certified. Well, there is a certification requirement, but we don't have that requirement here. Uh, swim assistants, I did not get that information to Dylan. It just fell between the cracks. It, just, I, it wasn't on my radar. There were several things on the radar with the swim program. That wasn't one of them. It fell between the, the cracks closing down the year. I had a swim assistant come in today to be onboarded. Um, she was 14. And at, when I discovered that, I had to say to her and her mom, I'm so sorry I can't employ you for this job, I was told at that point she had already worked a week and a day. And this is where I'm asking for forgiveness and not permission. I, I really was very upset. I'm sure they saw that. I don't know how they interpreted that because the last thing I want to do is tell a kid who's worked, probably a very first job, mm -hmm. that they're not going to get paid. So I did say that I would come to the select board tonight and that I would um, I would like to pay them, and I would need to just simply let the select board know. So I am letting you know that I did offer that to this young person, and I am hoping that, and now I'm asking, I'm hoping that you could um, ratify that. Um, I have a couple questions. Not a promise, but that mm -hmm. uh, offering to this person, to this so young person. the person, this this kid that came in, mm -hmm. they had not filled out the paperwork before they started their job? No. Okay. In fact, none of the SWIM program Because this, could have, been, because this right. could have been avoided had they come in and filled out the paperwork ahead of time like most people do at most jobs. That, and I understand it's right. a small, you know, it's, it's a callous SWIM program, it's small, it's been in operation for a really long time and they've done a really good job. Um, so I would be in favor of we should pay this kid who worked. I would not want to see them not get paid. Um, I don't know, is there any liability? Well, if we paid... Probably there may be, there certainly is, um, and you would be assuming that liability if the issue ever came before wage and labor. Mm -hmm. um, 
But but there would be a fine to the town. What is the, what what's the cost? Well, of the, fine? the it could be as much as five thousand dollars, and I certainly would think that this would not get people right. wage and labor. But the labor's already been performed. Right, the after labor making is, the payment. That's right. That it's already after the yeah, fact. There's an after obligation the fact. made. Right, the labor thing was already performed happened. under that obligation. Right, so but I'm, I'm talking about for the future. Anyway, so. Right. So for the future, I was upset, and then I got angry, then I calmed down, and then one of the uh, very hardworking program volunteers, you know, what was upset and expressed that with me for a lack of timeliness. Um, and I understand that, and I own that that information was not timely tra transferred, I however, I think rather than point fingers at one another, right? Let's figure out how to fix. I the think problem. we need to be informed and understand that we have a process that isn't in place, and we need to put one in. I wonder if it would help to have a meeting with some of the key players in the swim program, come up with a process, and this would apply also to like I don't know the Curtis Pond. Curtis Pond, whatever those people the, are called. Uh, the checkers. Checkers, yeah, the algae checkers or whatever they and are. At, at each the spring. greeters. The greeters, that's it. Yeah, to, I mean, we, wanna, we want kids to work. We, wanna have a good work. we want them to have a good work ethic and get paid and so forth. But, and as volunteers, swim program, Curtis Pond, people, maybe if we had a checklist that we could put together of this is what you need to do before anybody starts work. We are working on that in the office at this time. Barbara Butler and I have put our heads together and debriefed, and we have a memo between ourselves that is geared to doing just that. But I did want to bring it to the select board's attention mm -hmm. um, because I do know we have a volunteer who is really, I'm sure, overworked and overwhelmed Right. and is disappointed that this is not going to be smooth. Mm -hmm. And I have a young, hardworking kid and mom who were, I'm sure, shocked Right. No, we, we need to, we need to, we definitely need to pay her. Great. But, but, but and that <laughs> yes, would be, good. I don't know if you want a motion for that so that it's in the minutes or yeah, what maybe you would that, like. Probably okay. that. I would make a motion that we pay this young person whose name I second not remember. For the time that she's already done, I'm assuming that Going, she can't do any more. She cannot be in the water. But she can she be on the shore sure. so and she assisting, still, but so she cannot be in the water. Is she the only one? Or we? There she? is one other person who I think is 13 years old, uh, but who has not worked yet. Okay. Um, so, and that person needs to fill out the paperwork ahead of time. Needs to know they can't be in the water supervising other. Kids. I'm, hold on, I'm confused. So you can employ people at ages less than 15 just so long as they're... Well, to help them take their shoe, little water shoes on and off. And no, I know. That's why I'm sure you can employ yes. someone right. um, under... I, I thought, you know, my that is I not thought, on I the list. <laughs> that is... I think they can because it comes under a generic category of... Um, no, no. Not, not prohibited or whatever. It's not prohibited. In other words, they're not using any kind of power tools. They can load trucks. There are some things a 14 and 15 year old can do, but oh, a 13 year old is cannot do really anything and be paid. Right. Let's we'll say that they're not. Yeah. It's hard place. because you want these kids to have this opportunity, and it's a good experience. But at the same time, we have to make sure that we're in compliance and don't put the town at any kind of risk. They can work on a farm. <laughs> well, these are non-agricultural. I know, I know. It's a okay. non-agricultural youth employment bulletin. Okay, um, so I made a motion. John seconded it. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Okay. All right. I mean, it's just one of these things that happens, you know? I understand there's that. No, there's no blame. Nobody needs to carry a torch. Nobody needs to be upset or mad at anybody else. Well, I'm disappointed just, Sandra's not perfect, so okay. well, that's the know. first I've heard. <laughs> Yeah. Pretty so, darn close. No. So all is, all is forgiven. Nobody should be upset. But I don't, but I don't want to sing Kumbaya. <laughs> <laughs> We're not going to sing Kumbaya. It, it's going to uh, require some creative management of mm -hmm. that issue, and I don't ex exactly this, know right, how that's this, going to be. That's kind of sort of well, outside this one program is right. a little stressed right now because one of their key people is not available this summer so that doesn't help 
them either. So it's, you know, it's, we just need to work together. That's all. Is this, is there, um, you, you talked about managing the, I'm not sure what the word is. Um, is that something that, that you're going to handle or are you thinking, does one of us need to make a phone call on behalf of the town and say we're sorry this happened? Um, I, well, I just shut off an email. Okay. Katie, it, it, Katie's on the SWIM program, by okay. the way. And I think <laughs> I was CC'd on And you were CC'd on that. So I will just express, that, you know, all, it's all good. We're, we need to work together. Let's come up with a plan so this doesn't, so we have a plan. The, the issue is, I think, that uh, Dylan is, I think, kind of the overarching manager of the program is worried mm -hmm. how are they going to safely manage the 50 mm -hmm. enrolled kids and I'm um, hoping 70. 70. 70 and many of them going many weeks yeah yeah well and it would also be helpful for the future for the swim committee to give the office a list of when the lessons are we don't even know when they are I think somebody posted something on front porch forum but I didn't I didn't think to keep it no so because I think the office staff doesn't even know when the swim program operates, the dates are. The dates are. So that would be helpful. So I think I think this we again, need, we just need to work communicate. together, communicate. Yeah. Communication is always, always the best thing. So nobody's nobody's to blame. Well, thank you. Kumbaya. Yeah. Kumbaya. <laughs> <laughs> just had to do that. I can't help myself. Yeah, well, I think Denise brought up a key point. It's it's a matter of reviewing the process. There's an opportunity for improvement. And that paperwork gets right. filled up first. Right. Well, and we're gonna we're well, gonna be having this conversation again about something else in the next six months. I mean, things happen, mistakes happen, and we right. and we're learning. Right. Always. We always are learning. I'm always learning anyway. Me too. Something new always pops up. Well, thank you very much for affording thank the you. opportunity to train and learn more and, and Barbara's, Barbara's get on ourselves. Board. Barbara's on board. It better. Four hours? Is it four hours a week? Four hours a week. Okay. Good. All so right. Great. Thank, thank, thank you. you so much. Thank you for thank you, Sandra. Sandra. All right. Thank you very much. You're doing a fabulous job. Thank you. Okay. So Toby contacted me um, late in the day and he sent out an email, which I believe everybody received because I forwarded it around, that there has been an issue that came up with the truck. Is this the new leased, new leased truck it's, that we're talking about? It's the new truck to replace the one time. So we don't have it on the agenda, so we can receive information, but we can't make a decision. Can I actually make a request? Yes. Given everything we have on the on the agenda and taking a lesson from the last time we talked about this, which or. A piece of equipment. It could have even been the last meeting. Could could we ask that you guys compile the information you have and the research you've done and put it in writing? And otherwise, we're going to spend 15 or 20 minutes eliciting it tonight. Still not be able to make a decision. And instead, we could save ourselves that time, get it in writing, read it ahead of time, read it ahead of time. You know, and we can we can't discuss, but we can shoot questions back to you. Um, for you to supplement information so that when we're here so put this for a decision, um, we're, we're ready to go. It's, the, the problem is um, Alfred started to look at other dealers to see if there was available trucks because going to Clark's and waiting until October and having the uncertainty <clears throat> is stressing him out about, about maintaining the one-ton truck. So we, he actually talked to another dealer who has two trucks acting on the lot. The last time we talked, it was code. There was something about Cody Chevrolet. Yes. Right. 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 So they don't have anything on the lot. have a truck on the lot. No, but that was part of the discussion was <coughs> going to a local dealer. Is that what you're talking about? So the local dealers don't have any inventory, period. Mm -hmm. We've looked at all the local inventory. The, the truck does not exist in the center of the lot. Yeah. Or Burlington. There's not a truck that's on the ground. <clears throat> so Alfred essentially reached out further to see if somebody had a truck that would meet our needs. And in Manchester, New Hampshire, there's actually two trucks sitting on the lot right now. Uh -huh. And that's why there was this immediate <clears throat> return to you. It had nothing to do with, we couldn't plan ahead. I only get the offers on what the prices on those trucks are today. 
the concern we have is that if we wait two weeks or whatever where it's on the agenda, those trucks may be gone. That's didn't we authorize a purchase up yeah. to X amount? We did at the last right. meeting. Right. We did. That's why we're here. Because the amount actually is higher than that of the trucks that are available. Yeah. We That's still can't. We still can't do it tonight. We didn't. Yeah, we we, can't, we can go with the price that we have approved last time, and you can let them know that we'll put it on the next agenda. I am going to ask the board to possibly meet on the fifteenth next Monday, and we can put that on then. Can you tell us the price differences? The one at Clark's was this. The one in Manchester is so, this. So I have a I have a, a chart out? for you guys. Yeah. Oh, great. So I can show you the comparison. <coughs> so Clark's is the truck that we first was going to buy the U.S. crew. Say that again. The first column where it says Clark's. At yep. the top, that's the first truck that you guys had approved money for. That's the 97. Then I found these two other trucks, the black truck and the white truck. Which are heavier duty. Which are heavier duty. Uh, the white one is the one I'm hoping for because it's got more features that will that will uh, serve us better. Larger gas tank, heavier, heavier duty alternator. Uh, it's got the snow plow package which wires the lights. Mm -hmm. It's already it's already in the cab. Um, it's just a better fit for what we're going to use this truck for. Mm -hmm. uh, but it's five thousand dollars more, and it's available. It's available. Mm -hmm. We can purchase it and have it in service probably by October. Whereas Clark's truck is not going to be even. It's it's just going to land here October, and then you got to put the month the body on. So does this. What's the rush? I don't, I don't understand. You can't make this decision tonight. I just keep yeah. coming back to that. Yeah, no, this is can't. what I asked last time. Well, we already understand that, but we're just giving you the numbers so that you, right. can, you can mull it over. Mull it over, and hopefully we can have a decision on the 15th. So, will they hold one for you? No, they don't do that. Because I mean, these trucks are very hot items. Everybody's liking them. Everybody wants them. They like the the way they're spec, the motor that's in them. The transmission people what, are buying them for what was the what was the price in the minutes last time Katie that we set up to you 116 and this and this says 103 that's so that's the trade hmm but see, I, what I guess I'm saying is you're saying the price on this is 103 we approved up to 116 so why does that, that but not that's, work? that was 116 for the entire truck not mm -hmm. including the trade and then the trade was 18000 That's what you approved, I understand. If you understand it differently. Yeah, let's call the minutes up and see what it actually is. But this says. isn't outfitted from Fairfield. Yes, it is. This is. All these trucks are outfitted by Fairfield. Okay, so it says, made, to approve a five-year lease purchase of a Fairfield business. number is on the road, right? It's almost two. Oh, yeah, yeah, okay, got it. Yeah. Yeah. A mid-duty truck in an amount not to exceed $116,000 and take no less in trade than 118. Then 118. 118. Then 18. 18. 18. Yeah, 18. Well, if that's the way you interpret it, then we can just go ahead. Um, that's what it says. That's, that's what, what it says. says. Right, but that was, my understanding was the, what we presented to you was the 116000 was the purchase price of the entire thing, not including the trade. That's what you're looking at right now. But even if you do 103 and 18,000, it's more than 161. Oh, this is after trade, that final number? Yes. yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's and, after but, trade. But this is take no, an amount not to, the way I read this, is not to exceed 116,000 and no less than trade of 18,000. It doesn't say. Right. In other words, what you're saying. But what we presented to you was 116,000 right. minus 18,000, which would have been a total expenditure of 98,000. Okay. So the minutes okay. are wrong. That's well, the minutes <laughs> are not clear. Right. Okay. That's what so we that's presented to you, and okay. that's why we're here. If you want to interpret it differently, and, and anything up to 116, including the trade. Yeah. All right. Okay. So I, I have a question. I don't still don't understand. This is my question last time about. I understand the rush to commit to something, but I don't know if we, why is it a big deal if we commit to something, I'm not saying we have to, 
say Clark's was selling a truck and that's, that was the equivalent, which it isn't. Why we couldn't commit to Clark's and get that in December? This, the, the truck we have is functioning fine. And they're gonna, t and they take in the trade and they commit to the trade, I don't understand. That's right. And it's a truck with 60 some odd thousand miles on it. And the only reason we're selling it is it had a, a, an issue that was resolved through welding. So I, I don't understand. I understand the hurry with the last truck. I don't understand the hurry here. So you haven't explained that to me. Well, and actually, I also don't understand. We authorized this last time. Oh, you said that it wasn't you, they you went, one. you went, they didn't have it anymore? They don't so, have it. They don't, they yeah. don't. Right. They don't no, have Clark's it. never had a truck. Right, right, right. Clark's no. has a truck that is on order. I thought that we had, but I thought that that was the solution we endorsed. And I think what you right. said at the beginning, Toby, is that you guys weren't entirely satisfied with that because there's a lot of angst around the timing. It's the timing right. issue. That so we concern. approved this, and they're back mm -hmm. saying, okay, we changed our mind. We don't really like that solution. We're, we want a different solution. And it looks like the black truck is basically meets what was authorized. It's 157. I don't even count that. So why, you know, why not the, I guess I don't understand. You go with the black truck. I don't understand it's the, the difference between the black truck and the white truck, other than the leather it. steering, CD player, power yeah. seats. It's a bigger gas tank, it's a bigger alternator, which this truck has lots of lights on it, and it's in the dark. But we're driving in town. We have a fuel tank three miles away. I, I don't understand. We're not going. Right, but that truck, it's a lot of times I fill that truck three times a day. If I've got a bigger tank, maybe I can get away with filling well, it once a day. Well, okay, so how big is the tank? It's a 40 gallon. Oh, I see. What, how big is the tank in your current truck? So, so folks, can I just bring us back to time, time here? Um, Jan is sitting here waiting. We were said we would right. do Jan around 7.30. It's now 10 minutes of 8. Yeah. And I don't like to No, I think we should have people waiting. We're not going to make a decision. We can't make a decision. I yeah. keep saying that. And we're, yeah. Right. So I, I would like to make a motion that we table this till the next, the next meeting. meeting and that we allot um, sufficient with, time. Right, that we allot 15 minutes for final questions, um, that we all ask our questions independently and so that Toby and Alfred can bring more information. And well, this is, this is something like this is really helpful. It is really helpful, but, if, but you know. To have it ahead of time would be even better. Right, and maybe. I can only put it together today because I only got the offer. No, I understand that. So today. that's why. Right. That's why but I'm just saying going again. forward. And again, right. so I will tell the dealer that we can't make a decision and the truck in a week may not be there. And that's, that's all right. I'm telling you. So right. That's, right. that's the responsibility that we have to That's face. part of the rush, John, really, is, is the truck's availability. These trucks are going out the door fast. Hmm. So we, we'll wait, we'll we wait a week. Um, is there any other information you would need besides what you see in front of you? I mean, essentially, Watch the financial mind. parts are all spelled out. Well, huh? Yeah, and I, so so... I mean, I'm seeing a lot of stuff that we're paying for that doesn't need to be in that truck. Leather steering, uh, CD player. Right, that's power seats. Th there's a list of things that are at, that are additional. I know it comes as a package, but I, I agree that, the, for instance, the fuel tank makes sense and, may, and the alternator may be improved, you know, larger capacity right. alternator makes sense. But, you know, what would the upgrade cost be to have them mm -hmm. upgrade the black one, for instance? If it's, you know, a, Fifteen hundred dollars. It's still better than us spending five thousand. So, thing. John, can you? We're putting a second tank in. Right. So we can look into that. The black yeah. truck. Those are the kinds of questions. Sure. No, and that's why we're here. Alternator. The, the main things that I'm concerned about so, is the fuel tank and the yeah. alternator. Yeah. So we have a motion. Seat. No, I know that, but we're paying for that. I know you know, but we're paying for it. Excuse me. Maybe they can put the bigger alternator in the black truck and the bigger fuel tank in the black truck. Right. And and then we don't have to pay the five thousand dollars for right. the white truck, which that's what I'm asking. Right. Yeah. Right. So, so second fuel. Let's, let's so look can, into that. Yeah. All right. So, so can we get Toby asked what other questions you might have. So I'm, I want to be able to do side by side. So that's what I'm asking for. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. It's not a criticism. Okay. I just want it. He asked me, and I'm telling you what I'm All right. So yeah. anything and else? Any other questions you send, have? Send, please, send throw Toby them at an me email next week so I can get some answers. Right. And, and if you don't have the, if we don't ask the question in time for Toby to get it. An answer, then that's bad on us. That's right. 
So yeah, so I will look into the price for swapping a bigger tank and an alternator on the black top right. and seeing what the number is. And can All you right. get that to us before next meeting? As soon as I get it back from them. Okay, so there's a motion on the table and it's been seconded. No, I think it's seconded. Okay, can you say your motion again? My motion is that we table this until next week and that we ask our questions offline to Toby so he can supplement the information. Compile the information. Compile. And, and send it back to all of us. We can't discuss, but you can send us all information. Right. Mm -hmm. I, don't, I don't think it needs a motion, but I'll second it. Chair yeah. just says that's what we need. Yes, yeah, that's, that's we well, but and whatever. I think we can just table it to the 15th anyways, provided that we meet on the 15th, and I'll let you know for sure after we meet tonight. Um, I don't really think we need a motion, but one's been made and seconded, so we should vote on it. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 All right, so yes, this, Thank you. 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 CVRPC has been working on this road erosion inventory report. They have a draft available. They suggested that they meet, they being Pam and Dan, probably somebody from the Planning Commission, maybe the Conservation Commission, and maybe somebody from the Select Board to review the draft. Once the draft has been reviewed, they suggested that then they present it to the Board, unless the full board would like to review the draft and then review the final. That was in here. Um, so my question is, and this is that's why this is, should be quick. It should take like two minutes to for people to say whether they want to be included in a meeting to review the draft. They are not available to attend a select board meeting probably until the end of August. No. A draft, a meeting to review the draft of the thing that we had in our in the packet. In the packet. Yep. And the object objective is, is that the draft would be reviewed by a group of people. Maybe there'd be some changes or questions that they would supplement or make changes to their report. And then it would get presented to the full board. So that's my question is, what's your pleasure? Well, if the draft is gonna be reviewed by the full board anyway, I don't want the board needs to involve, be involved in the drafting. Yeah. Right, this says um, report, I think I put the, had Katie put the email in there too. Um, so, you it, have that information. It is the timing, and then we have to, we have to approve it, is that what happens? I, well, I think we do have to approve it. There's probably gonna be questions by the board, and that doesn't mean that there can't be changes when they come to us to, as a full board, to ask and make changes. So this seems to me like something that fits under an umbrella of a roads committee that we've, that we right. think we're, we're in the middle of. We're working on trying to get that reconstituted or whatever right, the right word right. is. So, so and they, and I, they have been, I don't know if the timing works, if we could ask a group of, of highly engaged citizens to weigh in to weigh in, it will be useful to us and right educational for mm -hmm. them because all of these road issues tie together when you're trying to make road maintenance decisions. Mm -hmm. I think the idea is to just get this before um, Alfred, Toby, and some representatives from some different groups. I did send an email to, and I included Stephanie, Kaplan, who's on the Roads Committee, to see if people are interested in attending a meeting to go over the draft, but my question back again to the board is, do you want to be involved in reviewing the draft, or do you want to wait until it becomes after this group looks at it? I don't feel like I would add a lot. Certainly I would learn things, but we've got a lot of things that we're, we're owning directly that is a better place for us to own. That's how I, that's my personal mm -hmm. feeling about it. It's just other things that I, I just wanted to have that discussion. Mm -hmm. 
So you all had the opportunity to participate or not. It's not like you're never going to see it because it's going to come back. So is this specifically to do with the municipal roads? roads. General, general, general yeah, permit. right. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so, John, are you? I'm, I'm either way. I mean, if you would like the select board to be there, I'll be there. Bye, Sandra. Good night. Good night. Good night. Or if you think. I think that a smaller group reviewing the draft is fine, and then bringing it to the full board is the way that we would, seems like we should do it. Mm -hmm. Sure, that makes perfectly good sense. Okay, I don't think we need a motion for that. All right, John, you all right with that? Yep. Okay. Jan, you're on. Jan has asked me like two months ago about the time when she could meet with the select board and it just so happens that this worked out. Thank right. you for your patience. That's all right. Um, well, thank you for having me. Yes. And I don't know how long I want to be. <laughs> well, I uh, will try to be brief, but I, I want to tell you, I'm doing this in two things. What we're working on and what I would like to eventually work on. So I asked Cliff to put up on our website, <clears throat> we have posted the revision project. Um, and if you could just go and do the index of proposed, the, the, the first item there. The waiver? Yeah. Well, actually, no. That's the actual, there should, under, if you go back up, there's an index of the proposed yeah, amendment. The first bullet right there. I guess but maybe there's not, it's yeah. not it's not a highlighted. Anyway. And I'm not sure why it's not there. Hmm. Well, this is the town's website. Here. This is on the town's website. I took a, an idea from East Montpelier um, that everything we're working on is made to, to the public. Um, <clears throat> and we are working basically on everything relative to water quality. We've pretty much drafted um, Shoreland, we've drafted a 1.9 different a waiver, a new waiver language. Um, we've drafted um, changes to 3.2 through 3.14, which is water and streams. Uh, not that we're all final. All of this is a work in progress. Because mm -hmm. um, you still have to do public hearings, right? Absolutely, absolutely. And then um, we have just started do, uh, doing a review of flood hazard and river corridor. Now the reason why we're adding river corridor, which is a separate overlay, is because then you get in, the town would get an additional 5% in their ERAP. Um, okay, tell so us what ERAP is. Yeah, I don't remember the name of the, what what it, it's it for the insurance. Instead of 15, I mean, home, instead home. of 12% for, towards insurance when there's a, a disaster um, we're covered 12%. When you add River Quarter, we'll get covered 17 This is disasters to town Females. properties or homeowners? Or it, both? I don't know. I, I, I mean, that whole thing is, all I know is that this is what the state tells you if you really want to get a full 17% mm -hmm. rebate, if you whatever you want to call it, in your insurance, whether it's the town or, I'm assuming it's the town, okay. um, you want to try to have River Quarter. <clears throat> Okay. Now, the state has issued all new regulations. Of course. And so we've started going through it the last two times we have spent doing nothing but definitions. And that's um, been a real interesting thing. We do definitions and compare, and we have two places in our current regulations. Uh, and so um, we've had some discussion about how we want to reformat these changes. Uh, we've thought about putting abbreviations and definitions at the front end instead of the back end. Hmm. Uh, we have thought of ways to do other formatting, um, and it's taking a lot longer than I, I really want it to, but our rule is we put this stuff up on there, we review it, we um, discuss things a lot, and when we reach the consensus that everybody agrees, we move on. So mm -hmm. it, it is taking a lot of time. Um, there are two things we still want to add, and interestingly enough, stormwater management and erosion control. And we, do, we have things interspersed in our current regulations. What we want to do is put in a standard that will be applied to all districts all over, and, and that would be 
applied by both the zoning administrator and the DRB. For stormwater management and erosion control. And erosion control. Um, so uh, those will be the last two things. I would hope, I was hoping, but I don't know how our timeline for this would be um, to maybe have a vote in March, which means we would have to have public hearings towards the end of the year if we don't make it. We'll do public hearings in the first part of next year and have a vote next November. This is town plan. No, these are zoning regulation zoning. changes. Okay. Gotcha. So that's what we are pretty much have been working on. Mm -hmm. I call it death by words because you're in the weeds mm -hmm. of regulations. And it's um, pretty boring. And makes your head explode, right? Yeah, it does. We, 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 we wish a lot. So that's what we are working on. Um, we intend to keep all of the language up here updated as we get it done. Mm -hmm. And I do know that um, lakes and streams have used this. Uh, I've had interaction with Larry. He's had a lot of questions. Mm -hmm. The one question he had is um, seeing a um, tract change version of what our existing regulations are. That will come and be published closer uh, to the hearing date. Yeah, that would be helpful to try um, to change. But for you all to read the change over the change over the change over the change, it's, it's an extremely complicated thing. So right mm -hmm. now we're just working on it and then we will adjust it. And Katie's going to be our formatter in chief, chief just, um, who's going to help us yeah. do the formatting of the Great. new one and try to make it uh, better. We want to have links that go out to um, state uh, state things like you know what's the what's a shoreland um, best management practices for shoreland what's best management pra practices for your buffer um, what's uh, that so we want that link and we have thought about every time there is a word that's in the definition we would put a that would be colored so that you could see and then hook it directly mm -hmm. to the definition wow so we're, we're, we're also trying to get this a little bit more um, updated um, in that sense Great. Um, I guess that's about it on what we have been working on, unless you have any and questions on there that. there are five people now? We have five, yeah. Do you okay. want to tell us their names, just refresh our oh, memory? Okay. <laughs> oh. um, me, uh, Gary Root is the vice chair. John McCullough is our scribe. He writes the most um, bizarre minutes that you would ever want to read. If you ever want to have a good laugh, um, we have had Supperific Blather. <laughs> Supperific <laughs> Blather. We should have that As it. we're reviewing our, our river corridor thing, it was just kind of funny. Anyway, um, uh, <laughs> Melanie Keene, um, as the lawyer on the group, she keeps us in line um, and she issues some good give and take. Um, and we do have some good give and take on the discussion. And Ron Smith, uh, Ron Shaw, Shaw. Shaw <laughs> thank you, uh, is the fifth one. And I'm, he actually he took a hiatus, and I was worried he wasn't going to come back, but he did come back, and he was really um, in energized. full form and energized. So I'm appreciative of that. Uh, we did have a visitor one night, um, Jonathan Fitch, but I don't think he really thought we were very enlightening. So, you know, oh. um, I would like. You know, it would be nice to have people come, but most, most of the public doesn't. They don't like it unless there's going to be something. Right. When the public hearings happen, we want to make sure we do a really good job of getting people out to, to your hearings before it comes to the select right. board. We did have two, we did have two inform, informational meetings on Shoreland, one in mm -hmm. Adamant and one at the... Um, Curtis Pond? No, we didn't have one at Curtis Pond. For Curtis Pond, people came. And the Lakes and Streams have been at our meeting, and right. uh, we had one at the East Callis Rec Center for the number 10 area uh, in North Callis. Uh, and they, those were pretty well attended. Very good. Uh, just a <coughs> housekeeping question. So you said that, that you work on them every meeting and the drafts are out there. So these are, all these hyperlinks are to working documents that change mm -hmm. meeting over meeting. Yeah, they they don't change at every meeting. That I basically 
not everyone because that's right way exactly too much. but um, but somewhere in one of those documents at pretty much every meeting something changes mm -hmm. that's what you're saying right uh, right now the things that are changing most would be uh, the definitions and then what we're doing with River Quarter mm -hmm. and flood control um, so, and, the, so yeah, you actually had something on that was going, what I was thinking about in the text above the, the links. We, documents below are working drafts, so I guess maybe my suggestion is just like underscore that by saying, and you know, we, they evolve, you know, at mm -hmm. each meeting. So people understand that this is mm -hmm. like, if there's a section they're interested in, mm -hmm. they go. <coughs> is <coughs> it, uh, Usually, anything is listed as listed as Right. Just so people know that this this is like these are changing right now. Right. Well, and I don't know. Um, is there a specific contact person for each one of those sections that maybe you? I'm pretty much controlling it and sending it to Judy. So maybe upload. your name should be there. Wouldn't no, because the authorship and the language is, is the group. It's the planning commission group. Mm -hmm. No, but if they had a point of contact. Well, it's in the, if you go under commissioners. It's on, under, we're under yeah. planning commission. It's you know, all there. We are. I like please come to our meetings because that allows you to hear from people as. It, oh. it does say that. Yeah, it does say that. Uh, right above Town the first officials. hyperlink. If after reading the drafts you have concerns, please come to our public meetings. Right. So I like that because that actually puts people in the room so that everybody in the board can hear from it. My suggestion is only that you help people to understand that this is not a, a It's lot. a working draft. <laughs> totally a working draft. Right. You've said it once. Um, I'm not sure if, if it were me, I would still think, oh, they made a change there, so that they're done with that, or I don't know. Just right. Help what it's what really we usually happens, so if you see the, there's a draft of section 1.9 the waiver revision yeah it's version one if there's a change it's going to go to version two and, and, and we're, we're going to change the date. the date right i guess i so we just we're trying to control it by date mm -hmm. um and we've had Which this time frame that we just you know we're, the the, fl the definite well like this week i i wanted to get to the definitions and hopefully there'll be something on there uh, you mean to work on the definitions? Yeah, I mean, I'm so like the last time the definitions changed was in April. That was the time when that's when all this got posted. Anyway, mm -hmm. was the right. first time that we put this up. Okay, right. Um, and it was. Posted. I like that it's on our website now. Right, and it's just so that people will know mm -hmm. we're not just simply sitting here having a meeting. We are working. <laughs> yeah. How How about something like please? These are working drafts. Please keep checking back as we evolve oh. the document. Yeah. So okay. that people know they're here now for you to look mm -hmm. at, but they are going to keep. Changing. I think you can just say that they're working drafts. Well, they'll be updated, and they're updated. They're periodically, periodically updated mm -hmm. as they evolve, or something like yeah, that. Yeah, some yeah. Some some ways that people know that that's not the final. Yeah, that it's, that, it's yeah, a working draft that is in it is in flux right now. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, thank you. You guys are doing okay. Now, I'm going to change gears because okay. when this is done, I want us to start doing something fun. Oh, can you tell us what that would be? And that is it's called community engagement. And I went to a VLCT program on strengthening communities for the future, community and economic development forum. And um, then I went the other day to the Downtown Historic Preservation Conference, which also was about um, building community and how you build community. Um, so here's my question for you, just to ask you. When somebody asks you where do you live, what do you say? Cows. Hmm. I say cows. Yeah, I say cows. Hmm. But some people don't say cows. Most people don't. <laughs> They're Adamant, oh, I see what you're they're Maple at. Corner, mm -hmm. they're North Callis, um, they're East Callis. But we're all Callis. But we're all Callis, but we are, and, and this has been a struggle, because when you go to other towns, they have a distinct 
Main Street. They have a distinct streetscape. They have a distinct area that they call their community green. Callus has, I've like kind of likened it, it to a star. Yeah. Ooh, right. We have yeah. Adamant to North Callus, we have East Callus to Maple Corner, and we have Gospel Hollow. Right. And the struggle is how do we become a community that kind of identifies as Callus um, and, and work through that? So this was an interesting program in both of them. Um, one is uh, the, the, the woman, was she does it, it's called a community sandbox, and you get a whole bunch of people together. Yeah, I was and, trying to explain that to somebody. And you start talking about, everybody comes in and says, okay, what's so great about your town, and what do you want to do, and, and it, you, everybody builds on everything. It's, it, 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 it is a group function, it have, mm -hmm. you have to have a facilitator there, it helps, and then you dwindle it down, what are, are there problems? What problems would you like to choose? Would you, would you like to resolve? Mm -hmm. And and in the, this case, what's up on the um, board here, there's something called placemaking, where you take your place and you make it a space, and it is a collaborative process by which we shape our public realm in order to maximize our shared value. What's the shared value of our community? What is it that we want to do? And they have something that they call the power of 10 or the, uh, yeah, power of 10 or something like that. Um, so there's a lot of opportunity here and I would like for planning um, to, before we do any further work on amending or rewriting our town plan um, in any way is to start reimagining what we are as Callus and getting the community to work together in that. Mm -hmm. it, it means that our, our focus is going to be from the bottom up and not from a project coming down. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, we'll, we work on that um, and hopefully some ideas that come to mind, allowing um, truck pop-ups to come and sell along here maybe once a month. You mean like food trucks? Yeah. Uh, creating little business pockets that can come along that you know tie it to whatever the um, when their art show is on you know could we have other little pop-up businesses um, the person that did uh, Bethel University is the person who does the community sandbox if you are you familiar with Bethel University they do pop-ups and little businesses along the street and they do education sessions along the street which would be great to have Peter at one of those fashions talking about his sure. shirt. Mm -hmm. um, so there's all Talk kinds of other things. Your and your <laughs> yeah, right, our, and Are then um, the, so one other thought that came out was having a high school student be on the on the select board, not to vote, but having a high mm -hmm. school person be here to share the new generation. Yeah, oh, yeah you can have a, a select board intern. And or planning commission or, intern. Yeah, um, any, anything along that line. So those were all kinds of ideas, and I wanted to share that with you so that um, you all have things, can think about this, and I have a request, is that most of this stuff takes some finances. We either have to hire a consultant to help with this, mm -hmm. or you try to get a, a grant to do feasibility studies if you want to do some kind. Um, there's the Vermont Council on Rural Development. Um, they've been doing the Marshfield Plainfield um, uh, ramp program. Um, a lot of those, ramp. it's called ramp. Um, there, there's a lot of opportunity there, but when you do a grant, you have to have a matching fund with it. So, and somebody to do the I want to ask the select board in your next budget. Mm -hmm. To put in five thousand dollars, and I would like it to be yearly, so that there's a buildup for a grant, mm -hmm. um, a grant fund, I guess if you want to call it that. And it doesn't have to be just planning; it can be whatever it is, in order to have the possibility so that there's money on hand. Uh, the one reason we did not get a Better Connections uh, grant was because we didn't engage in the community. 
and, and, and so I, my first step is let's engage the community, then let's work mm -hmm. through what we need, and, the, and if there's money there that we have for grants, and so we put money in for conservation, right. and not put money in for, for the whole issue of when doing planning grants, whether it be adamant or Maple Corner. I mean, we have great places and spaces here already. Mm -hmm. Right. So it's a matter of. of, of I like the pop-up thing. Um, that could and, be fun. And yeah, and you could do pop-up four or five times a year. You know, you could do it at different times. So there's all there's all kinds of creative possibilities to yeah, think you could about. Do pop up trucks on Green Up Day. <sighs> yeah. Except and my last. Want everybody thing. greening up. Yeah, but they want to stop and buy a hot dog while they're greening up. Yeah, or a cup of coffee with a cinnamon roll. Right. Or whatever. <laughs> if somebody wants to sell green up t-shirts. And if we can get somebody who wanted to start a brewery, that would even be better. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> mm. Okay. Um, so then I had one other last thing which I thought would be fun. Okay. And I want to put this out to you. Um, Judy put into my inbox the idea that she wanted street signs I'll call it street signs. One of those that say "Welcome to Callis," mm -hmm. and then when you leave, by mm -hmm. "Thank you for visiting." Thank you for visiting. Um, a friend of mine is a graphics artist, and she did hers. There's for Ferrisburg, and I thought about that because the brochure that um, <laughs> Judy gave me, you know, yeah, yeah, it's ninety dollars for this, and it's something for that, and it's something for that, and I thought I don't like their design. So my thought was. We have all kinds of artists here in Callis. Yes, Let's indeed. have a contest. Design what you think Callis is like for a welcoming sign. And we might have to be different and say, welcome to Callis, village of adamant. Mm -hmm. I don't know, but it's whatever thought you want. Um, and then um, maybe Nell Emlin could help get, you know, notify all of our, artsy, artsy our very artsy people. Um, have them display what they've designed in the town hall, mm -hmm. in one of our new opening things with the town hall. Mm -hmm. Invite the town people to come and vote on what would be a, a good sign to say, welcome to Callis and see you later. And um, we would need a, probably a little bit of money, but we can maybe get donations for that mm -hmm. in terms of if you get it a graphic ready, you can take it to, and I don't know what they use for the um, material for making those kinds of signs. Yeah. They're, just, they're like a flag. But certainly, the, the things that go on the poles could be done by local Crew. carpenters yeah. or the road commission, or road commission, and the road people could actually install, install them. them. Oh, yeah. So, I mean, I'm taking that. Are you talking about like the banner over, oh, not the little roadside. Not, not the little roadside. These are the banners that you like see. Like the ones in downtown Montpelier. Yeah. Like yeah. Party. Welcome right. to downtown right. Montpelier. And you could right. have, you, uh, you know, whether you have four or six, whether you have one at each end on County Road, you could have one on each end of Lightning Ridge, and you could have one on each end of 14. Mm -hmm. I mean, you, you know, there's a lot of possibilities. Right. Um, you can't cost is prohibited. Over 14, I'm sure. Um, this is the state. Maybe not. Yeah, we'd have we to could have put one of those. Check. That's where. We, yeah. Yeah. Even. Yeah. We'd have and, to and that's a but different. So, that's a different happen. sign. We could get a different sign with historic East Cal. Right. That's the other thing. I think it's a great idea. So anyway, it was an idea to engage the artists, engage the people to voting in it, mm -hmm. using the um, an opportunity to get people into the new town hall. Mm -hmm. When it's done, um, you know, I'm it's sure we'll kind have of like a. a I'm sure we'll have like an open house kind of thing. It would be a good opportunity for people to display what they're proposing and people to vote on it. So if I you think all think that that's a good idea, um, I'd be willing to like maybe work with Nell or somebody to start getting an idea mm -hmm. of, of anybody who would like to design signs that kind of... Nell might really like this project and be really helpful. Right. Yeah. And, and I think it would be a, maybe a first step in engaging people um, to uh, unite us. So are you? So you're looking for us to? Well, I'm, <coughs> I'm looking for your approval to go ahead and move forward. I mean, you know, I don't think I should just do that on my own. No, no. I think it's. I think it's a great idea. Other board members. Yeah. Go away and in? I actually don't think you need the select board's approval. And I think we should be careful about endorsing something that doesn't need our approval because we we've had not very long ago. We had, um, a, you know, an observer here 
and, and my response at least on how to get involved and where is the leadership is that, you know, yes, our job is to make sure the roads are maintained and pro or provide the, provide the budget to make sure, you know, I want to flip right. that, is to support the work that people do with statutorily d derived direction <coughs> around the roads and a couple of other things. But other than that, people like Peter and you lead on things that, you know, Peter's a leader on Cherwell, doesn't need our permission except, you know, for right. a sign. But, but I, I, I think, I think it's, I, I appreciate you bringing the topic to the absolutely. board. Absolutely. And I don't think we need it, I don't. No, no I, think it's, I, I agree with that. What I'm thinking of, though, is uh, like what's new Middlesex is, is a little bit, when I'm thinking of building community, that's going to take the power of 10, that's going to take a whole bunch of people from mm -hmm. different aspects to make that work in order to create um, a more robust plan of where we want to be in the future. Right, for that piece of the community. Of it, and that becomes part of uh, planning, and that's where I was asking for right. that in five years. So, right, anyway. but, but for the flood, for the art oh, project, the okay. flood, I think everybody, okay. I don't think anybody here would say that they didn't like that I idea. I think it's good, though, to have a select board in back of it, you know. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 you have, our, you have our support. Okay, absolutely. All and right. Katie, I think your request number one in next year's budget. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and Katie keeps notes. And if you have stuff. any other questions for me, otherwise I will end and you guys can go back to your meeting and end. Oh, we've sure. enjoyed visiting with yes, you. Thank okay. you. Okay. Thank I you appreciate you. your enthusiasm. I love yeah. the sound of all of this. Yeah, it's great. Yes. Thank, okay. you. Yeah. Thank you. How Thank you. All right, I will do that. Yeah. Time to do something. Yes. Yes. Yeah. 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 I'm tired of dealing with language. You know that. No. Yeah. Right. Yeah. right. <laughs> Also add that in the shared Google Drive there is a link to this PowerPoint presentation if you want to take a look. Yeah, at it. I, I. Oh, good. Yeah. yeah. Oh, nice. Actually, AC, um, the uh, Agency of Commerce and Division has more than one presentation that came on that meeting. Mm -hmm. Scott Bassage was also there, and he went to a different um, mm -hmm. group meeting, and he brought me back this community heart and soul. Oh, nice. So a field guide. So I'm going to kind of read that a little bit and leave it back in here. So I don't actually understand that graphic. How to say. Yeah, yeah, it's it's pretty, goes into a break. It's a little down. too. It's okay. So, so, it's, yeah, I don't think we're going to figure it out tonight. Yeah. yeah. So. Right. <laughs> Thanks, Jan. Thank you very Thank much. Jan. That's really Good night. Nice. Yeah. Well, think about it in the middle section because they don't they don't either, they don't have any more town proper than we do. Middle section. They don't have all the villages, do they? No, they don't have the disparateness. They, have they the just center. don't. That's they don't have center. a village district, but they have definite. They're doing a streetscape along two, which is questionable because it's flood area. Mm. Right. But um, and but they're they, trying. They're going to build an area around market. Shady Rill and some other place. For hmm. their, and they built that grit. The the bandstand a few years ago because of that reason exactly that they wanted a place to. For the community to gather, to gather and yeah. start to build that. So yeah. there's several other things we, we right. could go down a rabbit hole. Yeah, middle, right. Middlesex is interesting. They, they they're just yeah. putting in a new plan, right, John? Um, and uh, yeah. they they're, um, they have 1,700 people. We have 1,600. Right. People. Yeah, they're so pretty close in size. They're pretty close. Yeah. 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 So it's kind of interesting. All, All right. right. Thank you. Talk All to right. you soon. See you, Jen. Thank, Thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah. Okay. That's interesting. Uh, municipal cybersecurity. I only put that on there um, to make sure that you guys all saw that email from um, VLCT, Jim Carrier, and then also there was one from RB Tech warning about cybersecurity. So this is, I just want to put it on your radar so that everybody's aware that yep. there's a lot of nasty stuff. There's a lot of cyber stuff out there. Um, I had hoped to have a draft letter for consideration for reimbursement of CALA staff hours and expenses for all of the labor and additional costs that went into all of the Act 46 stuff. Judy is going to draft the letter. But you all saw the breakdown of how much was spent on that. I just wanted to put that on your radar. Um, <coughs> traffic ordinance. 
This Toby is. has weighed in on some of that. So we need to come up with a plan, we need to, a timeline, so that we don't keep putting it on the agenda and then never do anything with it. So it's in the Google folder. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. We're not going to be able to do it on the 22nd. And I think it, it's in color. Toby's stuff is yellow. I didn't see Toby's stuff. I didn't either. I re. I made some edits this afternoon, so you'll see it now. I think that the wrong document was in there. Okay. Uh, because oh. Toby had revised one, but it was actually different. Than, than, it wasn't the one that I had already revised. Oh. So I, okay. Hagate Road is spelled yeah. wrong. Um, What's spelled wrong? Hagate Road. Hang on, has two T's. Um, is, did Toby have an issue, or he just made no, some No, no, I asked him to. Remember at the last meeting, yeah. we asked him to take time to review the traffic ordinance. We added the, uh, I didn't get as far as where the stop sign, and not the stop sign, the yield sign. He added language about that. Right. So I think if everybody could commit to reviewing this. Is it in the folder for this meeting yes. today? Yes. But wait a minute. So I, so I read it earlier today, and I guess it's a question whether I read it. Mm -hmm. You probably read it before. But. What are there these changes like Valentine Road, Hayden Road, Upper Road? That's all I stop, saw. Right. Is so that is just font color. It came right. to me that way. I think maybe Jonathan or a previous editor had for some reason. So Jonathan. I can take out. Jonathan, we did talked it. about okay. this. You know why? Right. right. Because Jonathan it didn't ever have the road names, it only had highway numbers. Sure. And it was impossible to know I what see. those were. No, so it's great. But what I don't understand is why we can't approve it now. Like what? Because Toby made some additional changes, probably since beyond, that you haven't seen. Beyond like saying, oh, this is a state aid highway. Right. Like actual substance. Has our yield sign been added to this one? Yes, yes. that was in there. Um, and then like on page two, for instance, there's reference to some road numbers, but it doesn't have the name. Okay, so it's... And I believe those are all... Is that, can you go back on page two? Yep, here he is on page two right there. Page two right now. Yeah, see it said, um, SAH number two, Worcester Road, okay. So you wanted, did you, did you go in here? I, I had a, in? I, yes, I had already, that was the work that I did, was to add in parentheses next to every single one which road it is. Okay, so it must be the one I saw this morning. You're right, yes. It didn't have all that. That's right. right. That's okay. right. So I've combined, I hand-moved everything that he did on a separate document into this one. <coughs> and see Sharon, the stuff that's yellow highlighted? Right. That's what Toby, that's what Toby did. did. Sure. <coughs> so I don't know if you're ready to, to me that's just housekeeping. Right, but we have to if we, we have to warn an agenda item to approve the revised traffic ordinance because then the clock starts ticking for people to within 45 days if they oppose anything to file a petition. So that's why I've been putting it on like this right. because I didn't know where folks were at with approving it. So but that's but so I guess my question is do you feel like those what I'm going to call housekeeping changes are of su such significance that we shouldn't approve this tonight. Well, I can we tell can. you right now there's a typo. Not not typo. This has been a and it just reminded there are, me. There were a number of typos. Not not a typo. It, yeah. There's a. Where are you, John? Um, I'm scrolled down to page nine. Uh, where it has yield intersections. Years and years ago, uh, Road Commissioner Don Singleton mm -hmm. um, added, without going through the ordinance process, it's not finding fault, just what happened, a yield sign at the intersection of uh, Singleton Road and Fowler Road. So if someone were to run that and that, that not slow and not be safe, uh -huh. um, there'd, be, there'd be no ticketing authority. It would be nothing anyone could do because it's not a le legally Well, that's why I've been trying to get deal. us to focus on it, just for those exact so, reasons, John. But, but, but that being said, I'm not sure that's the right place for the yield sign. No. I think the yield sign really should be on Fowler Road, Yeah. because the straightaway is Singleton Road. Yeah. Um, and so it, it's that. awkward. Well, I'm not sure, but you know, that was done maybe a road 
road commissioner right. has a different opinion about that. So right. that that that's a reason for a discussion. Well, there. that I don't yeah. Know to, well, so I, and that's things like that that I've been trying to right. So that's if, if that's a really good. It's a good. It's a good point. But right. I'm gonna just say I you know now you mentioned that I think oh isn't there one on Bliss Pond Road and Fowler at the other end. But in any case, isn't that what we need Toby to do? Well, and that's yeah, key. yeah, and because I don't want to drive around town. No, with my this people, one there. right? That's missing here don't too. Don't you think? So, so that we need really so need a special. We need to ask Toby specifically to say, review the yield. It occurred to us, I right? Two of them, I think. You can put that on my to-do list to right. send Toby an email about double checking on the location of all the stop signs and, and yield, yield signs. signs, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And actually, the stop sign at the top of Lightning Ridge is gone. I forgot to tell them that. Yeah. What? They just put one up there. The stop sign? Yeah. The the name, the street sign is there. Oh, the stop, the stop sign, sign is gone. I yeah. swear, they put one. Never mind. Yeah, but they did. I remember yeah. last year got knocked over. Yeah, and, yeah. And, and they Alfred put it up again, up. but now there's yeah. no stop There's sign. definitely somebody does not like that that road was narrowed the intersection and ever since then they've been doing damage there mm -hmm. like to prove something it's starting to really bug me well and what about our game camera idea it's gotten to the point well i thought like we, we talked about a game behavior. camera we could report it to the vermont state police i don't know i guess i'd want to double check and make sure we have you know putting up a game camera and having it record everybody and everything that goes by there or and didn't Whatever. we discuss the possibility of somebody putting it on private property? Yes, we did. We right. We're, I'm not saying that we should do it. I'm just wondering why some private property owner or that some private doesn't property do it. owner could do it. If only Rose owned property there. Right. There's too much churn. <laughs> All right. All right. So I agree. So we that's have, why I keep putting this on here. But it sounds like we need to get Toby to review stop sign locations, yield signs. Right. And give him a deadline. Right. Because I'd like to get this. Let's give him a month. Well, I mean, well, no, if, I think if we he's going to be looking long. at those, should he make sure that the posted speed limit signs are there? Well, right, all of it. You know, all of that. Yeah. Do you think a month's not enough time? No, I think it's no, more I than enough. I think it's more than enough, but. So the, for August 28th. Yeah. So Katie, I'll put that on my to do list, and I will ask Toby to kindly do that work. And make those revisions using start changes so we can see them. Right. Good catch, John, because I thought we were just, and really, we are just talking about, us. I mean, these are all just housekeeping. Yeah. But the, but the fact that there's stuff missing. And then we also needed a yield sign at the, that one's there. Yeah. Right? Where's, oh, Kent Hill Road entering SA. Well, yeah. this is, I think this is before you were on the select board, Sharon. We, we had an incident. With what? Where a, a police officer pulled someone. What's that? In, Oh, also over between your road, Tucker, and the elementary school road there. Gray. 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 Sheriff pulled somebody over running a stop sign or stop speeding, speeding there. Speeding, and it wasn't the right And way. it wasn't properly. Um, Speed limit signs it have wasn't, to be a it, Well, no, no. It wasn't. It, it didn't go through the ordinance process, so he couldn't write the ticket. He knew, he knew what. But we also had one. Get a record Maple. of it. We so he said you need, and we fixed that. Right, but, but we had one in Maple Corner, Corner too, where the stop sign wasn't the right height. It wasn't the right height. Or was it obstructed by branches? No, it wasn't high enough. It wasn't, the pole it wasn't, wasn't, high, wasn't enough. High, high enough. So we need to make sure all those little. That's why he went to Maple Corner, at 58 miles an hour. Right. So but he got out of the ticket because of the sign wasn't ticket, the right yeah. height. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so it's those kinds of things that I'm glad we're having this discussion. Can we tell Toby we're not talking about? housekeeping like you know typos that we want to do we want a real substance yeah, well, take that's inventory of speed yeah. limits and, and make sure everything's yeah. yeah yeah okay thank you get this moving okay all right um just give my <coughs> quick update so don't forget july 22nd um poplar cemetery closing we're going to have a space at the east montpelier town office to meet at 6.30, and we may have a couple of other housekeeping things. It sounds like Sandra might have something um, for us. And then we're meeting jointly with the East Montpelier Select Board regarding the East Montpelier Fire Department again. That'd be fun. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I've been in contact with the sheriff. 
<coughs> they had something come up and they were actually out of town for tonight. So are they working this year? In our I town? just I just saw them pull. Had somebody pulled over at Maple Corner just the other day. Good. That's exactly where they should be. Um, awesome. So they're either going to come on the August twelfth or the twenty sixth. They're going to let me know which one. Forks. Um, you remember last time we had the uh, Beaver Dam on Ken Hill Road. I double checked with Toby. He hasn't. Um, Gotten in contact with Tyler Brown yet? That was in the minutes for him to, to do that, and I did double check with him. Can you give me an update on that one time truck, please? No. No, I can't. Um, office phone system that is being worked on. Um, you looked at these? Yep. I looked at everything on them. Yep. Rowdy from. Some communication company looked at the phone system, consolidated, has to come and do some work. The original installation, the phone system was kind of not done quite right. So there's a bunch of work that has lines. to be done. The phone lines are all mixed up. Is the issue. And the fact that one of the lines doubles as the DSL connection and a voice line is causing problems. I came in and did some testing. Um, I looked at what has been done by Consolidated. <coughs> They've put in a new uh, junction box oh, they did? over here and cleaned up a lot of that in tandem with untangling the, the bird's nest that's uh, up in the attic. Oh, shit. And, There's um, a bird's <laughs> nest of wires. Junction. Oh, box. I thought you meant like for I thought a real one. And, and mice chewing on the wires. Mm -hmm. and, okay. A junction box that is a tangled nest. Tang tangled web we weave. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, we may need to splice out the uh, DSL because I think that is impacting um, the ability of the calls to roll over when somebody's on the main line. The way the system is supposed to handle it when you set it up properly is. Somebody calls in right now, if somebody's on the main line and somebody calls in, they get a busy signal. Mm -hmm. What's supposed to happen is it should roll over to the second line and allow them to leave a message. Did you ever find out, because remember this rowdy person I said that that wasn't I, the right wanna, phone system. But I want to talk to him about that because I want to understand what, I, what I've heard is secondhand. Mm -hmm. um, so I want to talk to him directly. Um, to understand specifically what his concern is because that phone system that we got does have the ability to roll over calls and you can forward calls mm -hmm. to other other phone numbers not just on the right. internal right. system shouldn't be that hard folks no and we, we purchased this new system the other possibilities he could be looking at thinking about what we need is a PBX solution. You know, this phone system is compatible with CO or PBX setup. Mm -hmm. so, is no Rowdy, Rowdy is a guy? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's his real name. Are we still in contract for setup or some, you know, like like all this implementation stuff should have been part of contract? Yeah, I don't know what arrangements were made with him. I was kind of out of commission and that's what initiated the contact with Rowdy and whatnot. So. I don't know. No, but the original, did he input, did he? No, 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 this, no. And this no. phone system has been here, the wiring and all that stuff for years. Well, since it was built. So the right, wiring of the building is the oh, issue. Oh, that's the not issue. Not the phone system. Got it, got right. it, got it. Right, okay. it's all the wiring mixed up. Got it. Um, thanks for that. You're um, you saw an email that Judy and staff sent around about their wish list yeah. and why. For the office, um, I don't. We'll have to find out the stand how much money is in that office reserve fund. I would really hate to see all of the natural light be cut off. So I think we need to be careful when we're redesigning. I get it that they need some private space. Sandra, who is doing our HR stuff, doesn't have any place to meet with people to talk about. You know, they want to talk about their. W-2s or, you know, any of that stuff or... That all that went down today, yeah. Yeah. So, I think it's imperative that we do something to make the space better. Now that all of the elections and stuff are over, um, I'd like to focus on it and what we can do is 
when Cliff and I have a staff meeting, we can go over everything with them and then invite office staff to come to a select board meeting to discuss it and find out how much money it is and how much it's gonna cost. John McCullough was going to try to help, but he's pretty much bogged down with town hall. Mm -hmm. And even more so since um, one of the folks that was the head of project for renovations is out of commission for a while. So that's kind of an update on that. The office roof, I've been in contact with Andy, and he had gotten a couple of bids, but he hadn't gotten three, and then there is now a concern that people don't want to bid on this job of fixing this section of the roof, because they're concerned that when they get in there, it's gonna be more um, difficult to fix than what we originally thought. So I have to circle back around with um, Andy I, because- I spent some time with Andy there a week ago. Did you? Like an hour looking at that. And what did you find? Um, uh, my suggestion is that he should just, when he has time, rip it open and see what it is. I mean, the roof's gonna have to be fixed there anyway. Mm -hmm. So he should unveil what it is. It, you can do a temporary patch that will keep the water from coming in and then we'll know what we got and then the folks who would bid mm -hmm. would then have a better feel for what they would be required. Roofers generally don't, aren't really qualified or don't do a good job at carpentry, complicated carpentry. Mm -hmm. So if you get into a situation where these guys come in ready to do a roofing job and they've allocated you know, a couple days to what should be a two day roofing job and they open it up and it's a bee's nest of work, they, yeah, there's not, there's they, they just patch it and make it work and then you wind Is up it, with this. Did you horrific. see any rot? Um, there's rot, rot that's on what, the eve. That's there's what water leaking about. getting yeah. underneath yeah. and um, but where is. exactly and, and how much and you know did they put uh, weather shielding all the way up it is a lot a lot of questions so what do you do so so what should Andy do should he be asking people to come in and look at that before they no I think what, what no no we need to open it up and see we diagnose <laughs> that we, get, we can Andy. have him we Andy, Andy. Andy. okay I just want to be clear open it mm -hmm. you know um, and we pay him for that and right. then we get a we can better assess what the circumstances are okay. beneath the metal roof that sounds like a plan because they're going to have to open it anyway. Right. So we know that's right. going to have to be pulled out. Let him do that. Then we know what we got. And then we can be in a better place to uh, figure out what, okay. uh, how to bid it out. And it may be that we need, we need to first get carpenters in there. Right. And carpenters know how to, what they call, uh, it's a term that Ernie Parrish used all the time. But dry, dry frame or dry it, dry it out, whatever. There's a okay. term they use when they when I get a roof sealed up and ready for roofers, it's, it's... Okay, good, I'm glad you had that conversation yeah, with him. Yeah. Good, good. All right, so we'll ask Andy to maybe work on that. I think he's, I think he was helping over at the town hall some too. He was. Yeah. Yeah, he's the man. Yeah. Okay, um, BOA meeting on August 12th before the regular select board meeting. There's one, um, it's a, one is a lister error, and then we have a bunch of these 87 cents, a dollar 23, you know, those small I thought we list. had a policy that no. under $10 can be waived. I thought we did that. Well, we tried. We tried, but what happened? By statute, you can't do that. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. Yep, that's what we found out when we tried to do it. NFW. So, yeah. So I think we, I think we agreed, like, we did it last year. We had we abated so we just small amounts. Them a list of right. So the Santa just needs to put together a list, yeah. and we do it as a as a block. We don't have to well, discuss it. Okay. Right. Does everybody understand? We don't discuss it. <laughs> no, because the BOA is consists of select board listers. Okay. Yeah, it's not just us. Justices of the peace. So, and I'm looking to see if you would like to do and maybe we won't be able to decide that until we go into executive session and then come out um but in the meantime we have a, there's a couple of things that need to be signed you're doing warrants right now we approved the town meeting minutes of march 5th it was march 5th not 6th huh march 5th 2019 we approved them but we never signed them and then we had the wrong ones to sign. March right. 5th was town meeting yes. day. 
Okay, and then the last meeting we had the wrong oh, yeah. we had the wrong date on them, so we couldn't sign it. So we've already approved them. I don't know that we need to really do anything else now except for sign them and make a note in the minutes from now. Um, so I'll send these around for signature. And the other thing is I went to send out this um, approved amended um, curb cut for Chris Neff on Max Gray Road, and we voted on it at Marshall Hill 9 yards, but we didn't sign it. So I don't think we need to go through the whole thing again. We just need to sign it. Could you and Cliff give us a, a very brief, I know at times, of the essence? We still need to look at the RFPs uh, responses, but um, a, a brief update on town hall renovation, progress, and... Um, well, with the lead carpenter, out of commission, John McCullough has picked up a lot of a lot of the balls that have been that are in the air. So he's really stretched pretty thin. We had our first town hall committee meeting over there last week. Um, the green building, the green builders are on vacation for a couple of weeks. The elevator person has been kind of jockeying back and forth about. He doesn't have time to install the elevator. It's going to be three months out. I could come tomorrow, but then John says, well, you can't come tomorrow because such and such isn't ready. So it looks like he's supposed to come tomorrow, this elevator guy. Bob, Bob Lee, or is it Bob Lee? Or maybe that's the window guy. I can't remember. But he's supposed that's to come. The guy, so, Bob. <laughs> um, so the elevator person is supposed to come tomorrow. Hopefully Ernie's crew, I, I can't remember taking one or two weeks off, do you remember? Two weeks. Two weeks. So they're out like this weekend, next week. Green line? Mm -hmm. okay. They're on yeah. vacation. Okay. Um, it looks, you should go over, I don't know if you've looked inside yet, but it's got, went, it's got went, sheet rock. It's locked up. Um, so it there's sheet rock up. Um, there's doors sitting there waiting to be installed and... You can, you, I mean, you can see the layout downstairs, where the kitchen area is going to be, where the bathrooms are going to be, the um, mechanical room, the storage, storage area. So if you get a chance, when, there's, when the doors are open, go over there and take a look. It looks really sharp. They've been working really, really hard. Yep. So, anyways, here's... Is that um, the other thing Thank you. I can add to that is that Donna and John uh, did meet with the uh, accountant for Green Line. Oh mm -hmm. yeah, Jill talk Williams about it, Right, and just talk about planning. There is some of the work that they have subcontractors they can call in to help right. keep things moving forward. And there are also mm -hmm. other individuals within the town who have stepped up. Yeah, Jim O'Rear, no, Clark Builders. Mm -hmm. Jim Clark? Yeah, they've stepped up to help out. Wow. Yeah. And it's, they're volunteering new funds. Right. Wow. Yeah. So it's nice. Yeah. So very nice. before that meeting, uh, Donna and John had expressed that they were very concerned about being able to keep things on track. They felt told us that at the committee meeting that they felt a lot better about things after the meeting. After that meeting. Right. And also after the discussion with the party. So yeah. So things are you know. Like I said, John McCullough is stretched to the limit yeah. with the amount of time that he's devoted to this project. And what about, Denise, um, we mentioned it earlier in the context of the CVPRC thing. Yeah. Um, CV, or anyway, Regional Planning Commission. Mm -hmm. um, the Roads Committee. We haven't talked about that in a while. You were, are you making outreach? I have. I asked, I, I um, spoke with Stephanie Kaplan. I sent her an email. Do you know whether Stephanie's contacted your husband, Brian? She hasn't. She hasn't. Okay. I'll have to get back on her again. I was giving her some time after she got back from France and dealing with her husband. And But if you make a note on my to-do list, I will reach back out because I also mentioned a couple of other names that we talked about right. if as you, possible opportunities to serve on the committee. And is Stephanie going to outreach to them, or you just haven't heard back from them? Because I, I like haven't. It. I haven't heard back from Stephanie. Okay. So I'd like to hear back from her first before I. Because we're asking her to chair or something. 
Well, she has been the chair. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, that's right. Thank you. Right. And I don't know if Rick Keen is still available to serve. Um, I asked her, I told her about Brian mm -hmm. and his background. She thought it sounded great. So I need, I'll, I'll close the loop with her because I got to call her mm -hmm. about a couple other things too. So. Mm -hmm. Um, I, I know I've mentioned this before, and I understand um, that you know not everybody can serve. And but J.C. Myers talked to me in the grocery store a while ago, mm -hmm. and he was at that point very interested in the roads. Was he? And he was on at one point. He was on at one point. Okay. Because yeah. I have a couple of other names from our meetings right. this winter. I mean, to me, anybody who has anybody who took the time to even show up at the meeting and be. Engaged, especially mm -hmm. the the woman who you know reached out to me had you know right. met with her privately. Like mm -hmm. I know you have her on the list. Mm -hmm. um, there's plenty of really interested, engaged people. Mm -hmm. Yep, that's what we need. Well, I I hope that they're ready to. Yeah, I had a question. If you were going to um, reach out to the people who were on the committee before it dissolved and it didn't give them a chance to serve. It didn't officially dissolve. Are you saying Greg might be willing to serve again? No, no, not Greg. I was the like the select board liaison. Mm -hmm. It was Rick Keen, Barbara Whedon, mm -hmm. Gary Schultz. Um, Conrad was on and then... Well, you, yeah, you? I mean, he yeah. passed away. Um, I think that Pierre yeah. is not in a position probably now to, right. to do that. But, but mostly I think Barbara... Whedon and Rick Keen should at least be notified about it because oh, yeah. literally, I mean, it just dissolved. I just, well, I because that they Stephanie, were still on. no, no, Stephanie just, it just, it just fizzled. Okay. It just fizzled. Well, they got the standards done. It. Right. Were, yeah, no, no, we were doing, that was the big we were doing thing. That's what they were work. moving toward. That was right. really yeah. the assignment yeah. that, right. that they. Right. Yeah. No, it, they, we had Conrad met, drafted them. We right. met and then long after that. Conrad. Yeah, I'll I'll reach out to her again. Yeah. No, I just think that I I, 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 I just think it's great. That they were still on. No, they they haven't met in about four years. Yeah, right. Since twenty fifteen. Right. Okay. I, yeah, I think it's, we're in a bit of a hybrid place. We do we want we want to bring that work forward. Right. Right. Um, and build on it instead of right. starting over. So well, we, no, we don't want to start over. Right. So we need enough people who are on round one. And we, and I think actually, I'm going to take it a step further. And I think that part of the charge from the select board is continuity. You mm -hmm. know, right. we're not starting over, but honoring and building on that work. Right, right. and that goes to the new. Um, Toby sent out that email. I don't know if it's in the the revised oh, road and bridge standards. The revised from the state. road and bridge standards, and the state wants us to adopt the revised road and bridge standards that the state has, but previously we. We adopted our own road and bridge standards, which were approved by VTrans. And I did reach out to Toby and asked him, you know, what was up with this. And he has reached out to VTrans to say, you know, these are our standards. Do they meet your standards, basically? So that's kind of where we're at mm -hmm. with that. Yeah. Yeah. I just want and I, I sent, and I did send. Um, those revised standards from the state to Stephanie. Yeah. I just think it would be good um, to have the former members mm -hmm. at least know that the committee is getting rejuvenated again. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And I certainly think it's a great idea to have new new blood for sure. Well, I, was, I was hoping that Stephanie would send out and reach out, but yeah. if she hasn't, then I will. Yeah. And are you when you say that the state endorsed our road standards? Mm -hmm. Is that them. that's the document that that group came up with? We're talking about the mm -hmm. same mm -hmm. document. Okay, yeah. well that so adds there's a some great deal of imperative that right. We so it's really important. It. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because we want them to look at our standards now and see if they are still meet or exceed. I think our standards exceeded the state standards, mm -hmm. so there was no problem with it. Yeah, because we have a sign off page from them from back in 2015 or whenever mm -hmm. it was. Um, okay, so minutes of last meeting. Are you saying special select board meeting 715? Did I miss something? Yeah, we haven't got there yet. Okay. Okay, now I can go back here. 624, right? Yep. 
And I think Rose and Sharon and I have made comments. Yep. Mm -hmm. Just setting up a context for the the, the vote. <laughs> yeah. Otherwise, it's kind of flapping around in the breeze. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, yeah. And then Rose had the question of what when we appointed um, Art Edelstein, what position he was filling. Yeah, the unexpired um, term of such and such, ending in the year. Yeah, or whatever. Oh, there. I made a right there. Um, about the guardrails, I just kind of finished, added a little bit to the sentence to make it mm -hmm. clear what we we're talking about. Those mm -hmm. are those weather guardrails. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. I didn't make any comments at 6.52 a.m. You could bet on that. Yeah, me neither. And it was 6.52 yep. a.m. in California when you made your comments. Okay, well, that's all right. <laughs> <laughs> that's where the 6.52, I was looking at the back of my eyelids. Um, all right, was there more? Anything else? Uh, do we need to look at what was said regarding the truck lease and make any changes there? I, I don't think so. I think the... Well, maybe we maybe. should. If, if, if what... I could not have told you... What that meant? What, uh, well, I would take it... It's clear to me on its face um, and Kobe said that's not what was said. Well, he said if that's how you interpret it. Well, it's not a question of how we interpret it. That is what it says. Yeah. So if that's wrong, then we should adjust it. What should it say, Cliff? Well, basically, the, the value is 100. The amount does not exceed 116, including taking 18,000 trade in. Taking, it, taking into a. Um, Can we let Cliff finish his sentence? Yeah. Yeah, just that it's you know that the that buy price of 116 is after the 18k trade in. So really, it's 116,000 minus 18,000. Mm -hmm. So really, the amount the amount not to exceed 98 is, is the 98. Right. right. And actually, when you work all the way through it, we actually don't care about 116 or 18 we only care about 98 however they get there right. right right so it really should say not to exceed or we should say 116,000 less trade-in equals 98 or whatever somewhere that it all three ends but, up yeah. being ends and ends at 98 yeah, but but even that I mean we had there were specific hey, I think we, it's important to clarify this but Why don't I think we, it's also important to just to make reference to its specifications were presented. Why don't we, then why don't we you know, not work Smith it? Why don't we say we need to work on that and approve it next time? That sounds good. Because we're just going to sit here and spend yeah. 10 minutes okay. tinkering. Yeah, yeah. That's a good idea. All right, sounds good. Review the motion of so something. going to tinker? Something B. You going to take John and do that? Thank you. And I don't know whether you all saw, I sent Tony a note a while ago requesting that the communication, well, anyways. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Well, in that, so we're going to wait on those minutes. We don't need much Right, right, now. right. Because John's going to tinker on the, make sure we get the wording right. Yeah, um, and one other clarification that I had in there was about, um, the sand pile. Yeah, did he because he because yeah, Kate, no, <coughs> Katie had just written that the sand pile was all good for next year, and I thought it would be better if we put did, wrote a little, gave a little bit more detail. Did we like, discuss the detail? Like, <coughs> and at that night, at that meeting, because if we didn't, then we should, could discuss it at a future meeting about the sand pile. But if it wasn't really discussed at that night's meeting. We can't really add to it then. We can 
discuss it again and put it in a new set of minutes to remember? I think he said they put up the usual amount. Mm -hmm. I don't think they gave the numbers. He did. He did. We asked. I thought we, yeah, I thought we asked. We did ask that. Yes, we asked. He said they did the usual because that's all they have room for. And because getting more is contingent on getting use of space somewhere else. We had all of that conversation that we right. could add into the minutes. We can add that in, but we don't know how many. Mm -hmm. We don't have the specifics, which Rose was right. asking for, right. which was how many loads. Right, right. We have yeah, what was the amount. cubic yards? Because I thought that it was important to, you know, address the public comments because, mm -hmm. you know, back in, or in the middle of the, the winter, winter in January, right. they right. said they're not going to sand on certain areas because we're running low on sand. So I wanted mm -hmm. to be um, cognizant of, you know, the <laughs> taxpayer saying, okay, the sand is put up for the year and so this is how much yards we got mm -hmm. compared to last year but when I we think only he got said this he got much. The same thing. Yeah, he said he got the same thing because there's an issue with space, space well, to storage. They got they go up this hill and then they dump off the embankment mm -hmm. down. Right. And they, they're right up tight. Mm -hmm. And they gotta have and a big drive push around or something. They Behind. have to be able to they sneak by the side of the garage and then Sounds keep dangerous. going and then there's a there's a road. At, that ends this way, but then there's a little path that goes up this embank up this hill, because that's cut into a hillside there. Could it ever like have an avalanche? Uh, I don't know. I don't think so. They've been doing it forever. So I think to answer, I don't think we can put in some more detail, but I don't want to mislead the public. I think it's the same. It's pretty, basically, it's the same as it was last year. I think we should put that in because we asked. Right, that is something ask. people actually care about. So I. Yeah, I'm. I, yeah, yeah. So maybe what, what uh, my comment was that it oh. needs to change. <laughs> okay, okay. Oh, as in past years, oh, sorry, storage no, space sorry. available for sand storage is at a mat is at maximum. Capacity. That sounds good. Does that work for you, okay. Rose? Yeah. I, can yeah. I, would how do you guys feel about the town purchased the same quantity as in past years? Because. Yeah. That like, works. Really, really, because we want people to have a chance to say what? Yeah, like, oh, we ran out last year. How come you right. didn't buy more? Right. And we can always, if an issue comes up this coming winter, we can always refer back to these minutes because I don't know how many people actually, mm -hmm. you know, read our minutes after every meeting. Well, even, even for do. us to remember, we had right, a exactly. conversation. <laughs> yeah. Good point. No, exactly. That's why I said we can refer back to them. Mm -hmm. Thank you. All right, so we're not going to approve them, but we've made that adjustment. We'll do them next time. Yeah. Um, so I would like to suggest that we go into this executive session to discuss personnel issues and the legal. The Are you going to talk about uh, next week, seven fifteen? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, well, that's going to depend on what we discuss in executive session about okay. personnel tonight. Okay. As to whether or not. So personnel is... Personnel and contract. Personnel and contract, contract. yeah. So move. Second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 aye.